isolation, homeschooling and dealing with pressures on food supplies. Lockdown is tough for many people. But we have a panel. You can help offer help, advice and inspiration. We are joined by cook and author Nadia Hussain. The Reverend Richard Coles joins us from Northamptonshire. And in Wakefield, we have Matthew Burton of Educating Yorkshire. Lovely to see you all. Um, Matthew Burton, I, I would like to start with you because I just want to know, how much homeschooling should we do with our children? Morning, Susanna. Um, I think it's different. Obviously, you know, children are coming from different sectors of, of education, whether it's it might be primary or it, it could be secondary or, you know, you could be towards the end of secondary or the end of A-levels. And obviously there's, there's a different, you know, different situation there, given that the exams in the summer are not happening anymore. So I think actually what it's about is that it's about the relationship between a parent and a, and a, and a, and a child is very, very different from a, a teacher, and a child, clearly. And it at this moment in time, I think it's about rather than a, putting a time limit on it or saying it's, it's right to have this amount of hours per day for this person and this amount of hours per day for this person. Actually, what it's about is about establishing those routines and making sure that there is a sort of routine in place for everybody. And, and it's about finding what's the right opportunity and what's the right place to do that. And, and how does it, you know, how does that, that work within the home? Another rich tool as well. Yeah, of course. Another really crucial thing is if you've got children uh, is, is understanding how much news you should be sharing with them how much information. We've had an interesting question from Darren saying, I've got a nine-year-old daughter. What's the best way to describe what's going on? She keeps asking me if anyone in the family will die. How do you pick through a potential minefield like that, Matthew? I think it's really difficult. I mean, I've got a four-year-old boy, Theo, and he knows that there's some germs about. Um, and he knows that that's, you know, it's not something that's, that's, that's nice. And it means he can't go and play football with his friend Isaac. And, uh, and that makes him sad. Um, but actually... You know, but my daughter Olivia, who's six, she knows a little bit more about it. Obviously, at school, they've spoken about that. I think it's about knowing your own child. I think it's about, um, yes, letting them know that obviously something has happened because of the fact that we need to wash our hands more and we need to be careful about hygiene and we need to make sure that we're doing a little bit more of those things. Um, but also that life has changed, doesn't it? Life has has changed significantly from a you know a few short weeks ago, and children pick up on that. They're not daft, and I think so. You know, without putting the six o'clock news on and making sure that they, you know, that they hear about the horrible things that are happening. Actually, it's about sharing, it's about filtering that and sharing. And I think um, appropriate things that you know your child would be able to handle is, is, yeah. is right. Um, but equally, I think it's about, you know, of course it's about knowing your own child, but it's, it's about them being aware of that, that there is a circumstance going on and that, and that things are happening across the country and the coronavirus is something that, uh, that clearly is affecting all of our lives. Yeah. And Reverend Richard Coles, you're a Church of England parish priest. Uh, you must be dealing with a lot of people who are struggling right now. What, what is your advice for people who feel lonely, who might be feeling waves of anxiety or grief, who might not have family nearby, or, God forbid, you know, in too many cases, are experiencing the worst, and then it comes to the funeral, can't properly say goodbye. You mm. know, you must be finding it hard individually, like everybody is, but also needing to provide comfort to people as well. Yeah, well, I mean, there are two principal ways of doing it. The first one is to get connected. Um, I think never before have we discovered the positive value of social media and the digital world. There are all sorts of ways of doing that. Um, for my, many of my parishioners who are older, they don't uh, perhaps have a computer or aren't familiar with them how to get in touch with people. There's a brilliant new um, training site called Bold New World, which gives tutorials to people who aren't used to computers on how to get onto that. That's really good. We've also coordinated our community effort here. So everybody in my parish is looking out for everybody else. It's divided up into sectors. Everyone's got responsibility for a row of houses in their street. That's really good making sure you remain connected to other people, allowing yourself to feel that anxiety and that fear is important too, I think, some sort of emotional hygiene. And also, if you're someone like me and you belong to a religious tradition, of course, you have the opportunity of prayer in a very disciplined and structured way. If you don't have that, I'd really recommend, if you can, finding some time to be on your own in peace and quiet, maybe just 15 minutes, empty your mind of all extraneous stuff, try to concentrate on the stuff that's important to you, regulate your breathing, and you'll feel those levels of anxiety begin to reduce. So the really important thing is to remain connected to people and also to concentrate on what's really important. 
Um, Nadia, if we can come to you as well, because of course you're a mum, you've got a, a whole load of kids running around at home, uh, I imagine going a little bit stir crazy in lockdown, and we're coming to you for some advice on how, like in my house, we're running low on surprise. We got set up a few weeks ago, but we're very conscious of the fact that we don't want to take home delivery slots because we're healthy. We could go to the shops, we could get that ourselves, but we don't want to go too soon. Uh, how are you coping at home in the Hussein household, and, and what are you guys doing to try and sort of maintain the spirits and, and keep those stocks on the so on the stove i think so far it's going really really well but i think what we have to do is rather than worry about cooking these amazing meals what we need to do is just shift the way we think about food and think about how much we waste and perhaps think, think about what we're what we'd normally put in a compost bin how can we use that is it edible can we eat it can we make something out of it and my husband always says i'm good at making something out of nothing and that's what we're doing we are um i'm using social media as a tool to share some of the things that i'm doing at home and i'm just kind of things like scrap we're making scrap soup so all the potato peelings carrot peelings odds and ends of broccoli cauliflower sticking it in a big freezer bag we're making something like four liters of soup at the end of two weeks so i just think we need to stop we need to stop and think about what we're throwing away and think about how we can use it what was your recipe as well that I saw uh, with banana peels? Because I, to be honest, this sounded delicious. Yeah, so I do. I've been cooking banana peel forever. We've always cooked banana peel. And it was something completely natural to me. And I thought to myself, hold on a second. I need to share this because um, you just literally shred up ripe banana peel. The banana peel that you would normally chuck away once you've made banana bread. And everyone's making banana bread at the moment. Don't chuck the peel away cook it up with some garlic, some onion, some barbecue sauce, stick it in a burger, and you've got, like, pulled pork, pulled chicken. It's amazing. Pulled banana skin. It sounds amazing. It does. You could eat that. I can't, That's I, a I don't vegetarian option. The banana peel is which bit? You don't mean the skin of the banana, yes. do you? What? Skin of banana, yes. Yeah. I didn't even know that was edible. There we go. That's why we've got Nadia with us. That sort of insight. Well, good for you. Uh, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, Reg Reverend Richard Coles, um, are you doing... There's a lot of online classes, information, tutorials. I know that you enjoy dancing. Um, <laughs> what, when you, you were brilliant on Strictly. Um, what, are you doing any ballroom dancing classes, playing the piano? What, are you brushing up any skills or hobbies? No ballroom dancing, but I am actually learning the accordion. Um, oh, crikey. Please don't switch off, people. How are the uh, neighbours so, uh, coping with that, Richard? Well, fortunately, I live in a vicarage and my neighbours are very long suffering. <laughs> okay. but, yeah, so, but I'm having um, accordion lessons. I've got a wonderful accordion teacher called Yanis, and we have Zoom lessons. Uh, and also, I did a, a streamed uh, conference with a rabbi uh, the other night, and I got to play Hava Nagila on the accordion <laughs> along with Amazing Grace. It was a medley that nobody would dance to, I'm afraid. <laughs>